Good evening and welcome to the Gospel of Truth. I'm Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so we're going to continue in our normal mode of broadcasting. I do have my prayer list and a song, and then we'll also uh, do a pitch for Brother Kenwood DeVore. So right now, we continue to pray on behalf of Annette Jeffrey, Geraldine Keyes, Ibn Jean Hayes, Elizabeth Adams, Yvonne Davis, the Ahmad Aubrey family, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels, Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo, Joe Brokaw, uh, Josie Pitt Sr. and family, Sheldon Horton, Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family, Shelley Lopez County and Cornelius County, Jacob Blake and family, the Daniel Prude family, Annie Riley and the Flowers and the Gillum family, Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers. We're also praying on behalf of Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgool, Betty Williams of The Connection, and Bethany Williams. We're also praying on behalf of Vanita Coates, Susan Gilmer and family. We're also praying on behalf of Dorothy Lofton, uh, Brenda Williams, uh, the George Floyd family, Vincent Jones Jr., Ayanna Rowe, Commissar Phillips and family, Stacy Johnson. We're also praying on behalf of Dudley Sankey, Jesse Stevenson Sr., and Sylvester, excuse me, that's Jesse Stevenson Jr., and Sylvester Stevenson Sr. We're also praying on behalf of Earthy Ursie Joyner, Curtis Porter, Chidhan Jim Pitch, Darnell Red, Ronald Gleaves. We're also praying on behalf of Pearlie Jones and family, uh, Valerie Sankey, Dicey Stevenson, Missy Williams, Willis and Norma Taylor, Teddy Lyles. We're also praying on behalf of Wilma and Harry Kellum. We continue to pray on behalf of Brother Kenwood and Myra DeVore, Otis Phillips Sr. and Loretta. We're also praying on behalf of Ralph Edward Stewart, Candle Yarbrough, Reggie Brown, uh, Willa Mae Willard, Norvell Edmondson, Weldon Rucker. We're also praying on behalf of Louise Harris, Augustine Red, Damar Hamlin, uh, Eddie Lankford. We're also praying on behalf of Otis Phillips Jr., Gwen Hill. We're also praying on behalf of Beverly Thomas, uh, David Alexander, and Sean Alexander. We're also praying on behalf of D'Angelo Gleaves and Patricia, uh, Gerard Herndon, uh, Brother Lindsay. We're also praying on behalf of uh, uh, Jean Alexander, Robin M. Williams, Jerome Holloway, and we're also praying on behalf of Maddie Lumpkins, and that's Sister Ernestine's, uh, excuse me, that's Sister Ernester's mother, okay? And so these are the bereaved families that we're praying for at this time. On behalf of uh, Martha Nell Bullock, colloquially known as Tina Turner, and we're praying that God will comfort their family during the time of their bereavement, as well as the May Holloway family, and it's our prayer that uh, God will comfort her family during this time of their bereavement. So at this time, I want to make a pitch on behalf of uh, Brother Kenwood DeVore. Uh, he is the founder of the 
Metropolitan Fresh Start House in San Francisco. And the program, of course, is a community-based transitional living program designed to assist unhoused veterans and other men in San, the San Francisco Bay Area who are suffering from uh, substance use. Uh, so you can go online to get more information on the uh, Metropolitan Fresh Start program. Kenwood and I are boyhood friends. We ate bread together from my parents' table. So I'm urging you to assist my friend and fellow laborer in the gospel. And you can send your help to Kenwood DeVore. It's actually GoFundMe for Kenwood DeVore. H-T-T-P-S colon slash slash GoFund dot me slash nine five seven seven nine F four six. And we will put that on the screen and uh, hopefully we'll run this throughout the month of June in an effort to assist my brother in his time of need. So right now, before we get into the message, we do have uh, our song. This evening, you're going to be listening to Steve Adams. He's leading Jesus is Coming Soon. So without any further remarks, Steve Adams, Jesus is Coming Soon. Trouble sometimes are here to live in this heart with fear. Morning. 
certainly would like to express our appreciation to uh, Steve Adams for leading us in that fine song, Jesus is Coming Soon. He's truly coming soon. I don't know when, nobody does, but we know it's closer today than it was yesterday. This evening, I'd like to call your attention to the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, and the verses number 23. That's Romans, the sixth chapter, and verses 23. And the Bible reads thusly, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it is from this verse this evening that I have selected for a subject, the results of sin. The results of sin. Now, what we need to recognize is that many people love the things of this world, and they think, no doubt, that uh, happiness comes in from the pleasures of sin. And they fail to realize what price they must pay as a result of their sins. Now, we want to look at some facts about sin this evening. And first of all, it does bring pleasure, all right? And, and we know that because Moses, over in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 24 and 25, the Bible says, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, okay, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. So we need to understand that Moses recognized that he didn't want to be a part of that sinful pleasure, which was only going to last for a little while anyway. But we recognize that he chose not to continue to be in Pharaoh's household. Now, another thing about sin is that it is progressive. It starts at one point and then it goes on until it ends in the final phase. The Bible says over there in the book of James, the first chapter, verses 13 through 15, it says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. All right, we're moving up this progression. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. All right? So, understand that progression. Sometimes you look and see something you desire, it, then finally you find yourself being involved with it, and as a result, you die in your sins. Now, sin, it, it, it's brief. It doesn't last that long. It, you know, it's pleasure, just a short time. For whatever it is that you're doing, you're involved with. Some people wake up in the morning, they have to have a, a old English, or I have to have a drink. And just for a little while, uh, or as soon as somebody finishes eating dinner, then they have to smoke a cigarette. The pleasure, and it only lasts just for a little while. Pleasure that people seek, okay? So we need to understand that uh, the Bible teaches us over there in the book of First John, the uh, second chapter verses 15 through 17 he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world all right we need to accept that you don't want to get caught up with love in the world love not the world neither the things that are in the world all right because uh if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All right, we're talking this evening about the results of sin. The results of sin. Somebody asked the question, well, do we inherit sin? No, you don't inherit sin. You commit sin. Now, some people even teach that a baby is born with sin. They say that a child is born, uh, they say that a child, a child that is born inherits sin. Well, I came by to let you know that that's just not true. 
Therefore, if a baby, a newborn child is born, they're saying he's born lost. Well, how could that be? He hadn't sinned. He doesn't know anything about it. So what we need to understand is what the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches that the son uh -huh, shall not bear the sins of the father. And this is found over in the book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, in the verse number 18. He says, the soul that sinned, it shall die. Uh, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. He, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon them. So, baby, don't. They don't come into this world sinners. They don't come into this world lost. In fact, they're the most innocent beings when it comes to life, a child, a newborn baby. One must reach the, account of the age of accountability, and that is being able to know right from wrong before they can be counted as a sinner. All right? And the Bible teaches that one must hear the gospel, believe it, repent of their sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then be buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of their sins. Now, a child, one, two, three, four years old, and I'll go up to say even five, they don't know anything about that. Now, when they get across to six, seven, and eight, you know, they learn when their parents tell them to do something and they don't do it, then they know that they've done something wrong. So you have to understand and look at it like that because uh, uh, Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized, a child that's two, three years old, believing, you know, that's not something that they can do, all right? And they don't have a, a to repent of their sins. Acts 2, 38, Peter says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, a child, an infant, but they don't have any sins to confess, all right? Romans 10, 9, and 10, we have to understand that, you know, with the mouth man makes a confession. With the heart man believes unto the righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, Romans 10 and 10. So one of the things that we do keep in mind is that the soul that sinneth, excuse me, the soul that sinneth shall die, all right? So what do we have to do? We all must become as little children. We have to humble ourselves. Go with me this evening, if you will, over to the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter. And we're going to read about three verses. Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 3. And the Bible says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we must all humble ourselves like children in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, what, why, does that, why must we do that? Well, I'm sure if you've experienced and watched children, you know, they might be fussing and fighting in one minute, and then the next minute they turn around and they're playing together again. But you know, us as adults, we get to fussing and fighting, and we want to hold grudges, all right? And hold them and hold them, all right? But we have to be like little kids. We're going to have a little scraping here and there, and then they're playing back together again. So we have to humble ourselves like little children. Remember, the soul that sinneth shall die. Now, I'm telling you that you must be of an accountable age in order to be considered a, a sinner, all right? Old enough to know right from wrong, all right? And God warns us all about sin, and he has allowed us to make our own decision. Now, that's how good God is. He gives you all the freedom and the liberty that you want. But remember... You have to answer in the end. So whatever the consequences are, you're going to have to suffer for them because you have a choice to make your decision to either do his will or to do the will of Satan. All right? And so whatever it is, you're going to have to suffer the consequences. And as we look at some of the results, and that's what we're talking about, the results of sin. All right? Let me give you a couple of examples, maybe a few. Adam and Eve. Okay, they were the very first ones 
to commit sin. They violated God's law. The only law he said, don't touch that tree. Don't eat the fruit off of that tree. All right? Just one law. That's all they had. They were in paradise, okay? And it was only one thing that kept them in paradise was to be obedient to God. Well, the one law that God told them not to, they violated it. All right? And what happened? They were driven out of the Garden of Eden. No longer in paradise. The results of what? Sin. They violated it. And today, if you violate God's law, and if you don't repent of that, hell will be your eternal home. So I trust that if you find yourself doing those things contrary to the will of God, that you will rectify that before they, it is eternally too late and you find yourself lifting up your eyes in hell. All right? And then Cain. Cain... He, he was the, the first murderer in the very beginning. You know what happened. Cain slew his brother. Why? Because of jealousy, uh -huh, envy. In, in other words, God accepted Abel's offering, but he didn't accept Cain's offering. He didn't accept Cain's life. But the point is, Cain slew his brother. And then God asked him, Where's your brother? And he asked the question, well, am I my brother's keeper? And in other words, he's trying to get smart with that. I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, anyway, God knew what it was, and he told him. He said, the blood of your brother cries from the ground unto me. So he had committed murder. And though then he became a vagabond and a wanderer throughout the land. Okay? And he had even said that his punishment was far too great for him to bear, all right? And so we continue looking at uh, some, some results of sin. Well, the people before the flood during Noah's time, they were just involved with going about, going and coming and giving and just doing anything and everything under the sun. Well, God it repented him that he had made man. And so he decided that he was going to destroy man from the face of the earth. Well, but he found favor in Noah, and he gave Noah a task. He said, look, this is what I want you to do. I want you to build this ark. Gave him the specifications and everything, told him exactly what he wanted him to do. Make sure you get two animals of each so they can come up. In other words, God's saying, I don't want to have to do the whole thing all over again. I'll just start from this. And so what did Noah do? He kept preaching, kept preaching, and People still wasn't listening, laughing at him. Oh, man, what, what are you building a, a, a boat on dry land? You know, they just talked about him. But anyway, finally, once the floods, once the rains came, all right, and it had never rained before, so the people didn't know what to happen. But it just kept raining. The Bible says 40 days and 40 nights, all right? And then the Lord closed up the ark. It was too late. And, of course, I can see him now. Bamming on the door. Let us in. Let us in. Well, it was too late. They had the opportunity. Well, see, that's the same thing that's going to happen today. Right now, the doors of the church are open. They were opened on the day of Pentecost in about A.D. 33. All right? But one day, the doors are going to be shut. It's going to be too late. So you need to make your call and election sure before it's everlasting and eternally too late. So, but anyway, that's what happened. They didn't repent and didn't listen to the preaching of Noah and as a result everything other than the eight souls and animals that that God had Noah to bring on the ark was destroyed from the face of the earth and then of course you know David oh David he was an adulterous murderer you know what he did he saw Bathsheba and she was out there taking a bath and he lusted after her he wanted her Yes, and he had her to come. This is the king now. You know, you gonna do? You gonna deny the king? So anyway, he also found out that uh, that her husband was one of his soldiers, and he was out in the field. So he sent for him and had him to come in. Why? Because the woman had conceived, and he wanted to uh, deceive him, making him think that this child was gonna be his. But Uriah, he was such a devoted soldier. And, and committed to his men that he chose not to go into the house. He was His thing was, well, if my men are out there suffering, why should I have the pleasure of coming here and being able to lay with my wife? So he didn't go. So anyway, uh, David sent him out to the front line 
where he would be killed. And that's exactly what happened. So David had a tough time. I'm telling you, the baby died. His own son wanted to kill him. Oh, he just had some terrible experiences in life. We're talking about the results of sin this evening. And then finally, in this example, there was Judas Iscariot. You know who that was. He was the one that betrayed Jesus with a kiss for 30 pieces of silver. All right? So that's what happened. He did that and he realized what he had done. He had betrayed innocent blood. The Bible says he went and hanged himself. All right? So things happen. All right? Just understand the way of the transgressor is hard. And the Bible tells us over in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The soul that sinneth shall die. The evil will be resurrected to damnation. John, the fifth chapter, verses 28 and 29. The Bible says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Okay? So, again, trust in the Lord. Do his will by being obedient and not finding yourself involved with sin. You need to stay away from it. Uh, Romans 12 and 9, we need to stay away from sin. And you can do that by faith, by having faith in the Lord. Come to him by hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and then being buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. By doing those five things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week if it's God's will and the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.